everything else that you need to know for 2024 Flower and Garden Festival. All right, so let's talk about 101. The festival is gonna be running February 28th through March 27th this year. So that's 90 days, a little bit shorter than it's ending last year in July. So a little less time to experience this festival, but there's a lot to do in that short amount of time. So we're gonna cover the best of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival, including 70 topiaries, 20 food booths, and over 60 new food items. Got a lot to do. Now, in order to gain access to this festival, all you need is a park ticket and maybe a park reservation, depending on your ticket type. And like any Epcot festival, food is a big part of it. So we're gonna be talking about what are some of the can't miss food items, some of the new new items and some that maybe you can just go ahead and skip. But before we get into food booths, we have some things to talk about here in the front of the park. One of the big components of the festival is going to be the inclusion of the World Celebration Area for the first time. You can see Figment already has his topiary reality he's claiming its place right in the heart of Epcot, as it should be. Something new we have for the festival this year is the inclusion of festival marketplaces down here in the World Celebration Area. I'm like 99% sure this is going to be a merchandise location. There are actually four lines of merch this year for the festival, which we'll get to in a little bit. But this is one of the new inclusions for here in the World Celebration Area. So we have these mystery kiosk here this one's already labeled as a festival market and a mystery sign here as well that is being covered up at the moment but the kind of interesting thing is that these two locations are like right next to each other so it's a little puzzling on why they would just have strictly a merchandise location kind of like you this is the one right here and then you can see the one back there as well so We'll have to wait and see. But they're new, they're here, they're ready for the festival, and so are we. The so brand new this year is the Figment Topiary right here in World Celebration. That is a great picture location. All right, so another big unknown right now is the Communicore Hall or the Mickey and Friends Mean Grade area. All right, so we don't know when this is opening, but they have made a lot of progress on it. They didn't start installing the mural from the concept art. Back by Spaceship Earth, we could kind of peek over the construction walls a bit and saw a little bit of it. I also saw pictures in other Disney News outlet sites with more close ups of the mural, and there's things like like reference to Horizon, and I'm really, really excited for that one to debut, whenever that may be. But this will ultimately be where Mickey and friends have a meet and greet, and then also around back this side, there is supposed to be more festival-related things like a stage for performances. It probably makes a lot of sense for like Festival of the Arts with all the outdoor performances they have, and even Festival of the Holidays. Remains to be seen if it'll be open for this festival, but considering this festival has a shorter time frame this year, I'm guessing it's probably not opening for this one, but maybe Food and Wine Festival. I think Pluto saw me. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> oh my goodness, and Daisy's meeting over here in this area. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Nothing to do with the festival, but that's really fun having characters out. I like it. Now, if you're walking into Epcot, head over to the right to head to the World Nature Area, which has one of my favorite things of the festival, and that is the Butterfly Landing Garden. Also, along the way, we'll be showing some of the topiaries that are up. And like I said, there are over 70 of them this year. That's a lot of topiaries to see. Some are from past festivals, but they're just in a different location, like the adorable panda topiaries in China and the Anna and Elsa ones in Norway. They're still there, just kind of in a different location. And then some are entirely new as well. Ooh, monorail shot. Walking into the section, you can see that we have a Lion King topiary over here kind of between the land and the seas. Then over here we have Pumbaa and Timon. They can't be loved all the fun. Returning this year over by the Land Pavilion is the Butterfly Landing Garden. It is absolutely precious. There are flowers everywhere inside this enclosure and more than flowers, there are butterflies everywhere. They are just flitting and floating and doing their butterfly thing and it is absolutely adorable. And it has been my dream for years now to have one of the butterflies actually land on my head. So we'll see if maybe this year is the year. But there's this kiosk right beside the garden. Um, and I'm not really sure what that's all about. So we will be back on day one to check out. Oh, but there's like a, it almost looks like a food booth sign here. Huh, so this will definitely be something we check out day one of the festival. We kind of peek through here, we can see that the butterfly topiaries are over here as well at the entrance, which makes a lot of sense. The sheep are shaggy looking and it's cracking me up. I don't know why, I love it so much. <laughs> the butterfly garden isn't the only garden at the festival that celebrates, well, flower and gardens. <laughs> but there's some other ones this year, including two new ones over in China and Germany. There's also a third new garden presented by Smuckers. It's a PB&J garden, which sounds really interesting. That'll be along the World Showcase Bridge. There's also returning favorite gardens like the one over in Japan, which is so peaceful and beautiful, and the English Tea Garden in the UK Pavilion. Standing right here, I can smell the freshly planted flowers. Oh, this is so delightful. The beautiful flower beds and floating flowers around the water are back this year. They are absolutely gorgeous. And oh, there's Goofy picking flowers. Oh, that is so, so sweet. 
Now, I'm not going to show where every single topiary is today, but there are some new ones that you need to know about. Over in Guardians of the Galaxy, we're going to have Baby Groot there for the first time. I'm so excited about that one. We're also going to have some Coco friends over in Mexico, probably where the Three Caballeros topiary used to be. RIP to that. Also, the front of the park greeting guests will be a giant wish themed topiary with Asha and some of her friends. I also found myself standing right next to the Honey Bistro. This is one of the returning food booths this year of 20. There are a lot of food booths and a lot of new foods, especially this year. However, my favorite, the Honey Marscone Cheesecake, has not returned, so I am boycotting this booth until that happens. Oh, sounds like they're getting ready in there. <laughs> but I have heard that the chicken sandwich they offer here is delicious, so it might be worth a try. But a new item I am looking forward to this year is the strawberry basil soft serve over in the Swirl Showcase, which is right across from the Honey Bistro. Wait, I was just looking at the food booth for the Swirl Showcase, and I saw down at the bottom there's another new item here, and it is a liquid nitrogen honey marscone cheesecake. I did not know this was happening. I am so excited right now. So you know where you can find me day one of the food festival. There are a lot of great new foods this year, actually over 60 of them. And one of them is right back here in the refreshment port. They have a buffalo poutine, which actually comes with tater tots, which I kind of love. But it, the cool thing is that it's going to have plant-based blue cheese and ranch. There's a lot of plant-based options this year. And also what's special about this poutine is that it's part of the garden graze. Now the garden graze is the, I've got to find a better name for this. <laughs> But it's the go around Epcot eating things that get a redemption prize at the end thing. <laughs> One day we're going to think of a name for this. And so the Garden Grades for this year, there are eight items. You redeem five of them and then you get an exclusive festival treat right back here in the Pineapple Promenade. Now the actual exclusive treat is a mystery until the festival starts. But I will tell you that in years past, oh, spoiler alert, it's been some kind of fun version of a Dole website of a flower and garden souvenir cup. But the most fun part is getting to eat all the yummy foods. So let's talk about some more camp miss food items. But first, let's talk about some skips. Now, it pains me to say this because for every Epcot festival, Canada is usually a knock it out of the park winner. But for this one, I would say potentially go ahead and consider skipping it. It doesn't have any new food items this year. Two cast members are practicing for the tea tour that's given during this festival. I've seen several cast members like practicing at the register and heard them working in the kitchen. So it's kind of fun seeing them like get ready. But back to food. France has a goat cheese. I think it's goat cheese. Yes, goat cheese croissant. I've had this one in the past, so it's gonna be a safe bet to get this here because who doesn't love bread and cheese and yummy garlicky goodness? <laughs> We got a couple of new food items at this booth here, and then also in the Tangiri Cafe, there are some festival items as well. However, we're gonna skip over that for now because we're coming up on one of the most iconic flower and garden treats, and that is the Frushi, Frushi here in Japan. It's a sweet treat inspired by sushi where instead of fish, you get yummy fruits, and it is one of my can't miss every flower and garden festival, so I'm gonna give it a big old check mark for your trip. Oh, and we're coming up on the American Garden Theater. So let's talk about the Garden Rocks concert series. So they have performances at the American Garden Theater, and it's similar to the type of performances you'll get to the Eat to the Beat concert during the Food and Wine Festival. There's a schedule with tons of artists, including both big names and some local artists as well. And food isn't the only thing that is new this year. There's some first time artists playing the Garden Rocks series this year, some of which I'm really excited about, including Crowder. Now you can get a full list of the concert series and who's playing when, as well as getting information on the dining packages, because like with other Epcot festivals, you can get a dining package where you get guaranteed seating for the concert. It's so cool these concert series are free because I've seen some really incredible shows here. A couple years ago, I saw Starship here at Garden Rocks. They were insanely energetic. It was such a great show. And also don't sleep on the cover bands as well. I saw Foreigner's Journey last year here at the Garden Rocks and they were so good. There's gonna be some pass holder exclusive merchandise featuring Spike. There's also gonna be an orange word line with some very cute looking merchandise, which I'm really excited about. There's also gonna be a Coco line and a Minnie Mouse inspired line as well. We're in Italy, so that means we're over halfway through our loop around World Showcase, which would have been great if this had started because then we would have been halfway through with our scavenger hunt. Oh, let me back up. All right, so during the festival, there are two scavenger hunts. There's the Spikes Pollination scavenger hunt, and that goes throughout the entire festival's run. And then for the Easter season, there's exclusive egg-based scavenger hunt where you can go around and find the spike or the eggs, depending on which scavenger hunt you do. And then once you complete the map, you can turn that in for a fun little prize. However, you don't actually have to complete the map. If for some reason you can't complete the map or you just don't want to, you can still turn it in for the redemption prize regardless if all the stickers are actually placed on it. But back to food, usually the Italy food booth at a festival is a skip for me. It's so funny to me because when I think Italy, I think like pizza and pasta and bread and all this delicious stuff, but for some reason it's notoriously one of the not so great festival booths. But maybe this year's the year because they have a brand new menu, including a spicy pasta, which sounds very delicious. 
Joffrey's kiosk around Epcot also have festival exclusive treats, as well as there are some food booths heading into World Showcase, like the Trowel and Trails food booth right back there. Now, they have some new food items as well, including one that's a little sus in my book because it sounds an awful lot like a treat I had a couple of years ago at another Epcot festival. But it was delicious, so I'm glad it's back. The very cool Encanto Topiary from the entrance of Flower and Garden Festival last year is now here at the main entrance for World Showcase. And then there are also some food booths kind of on this side of Spaceship Earth near-ish test track. The Epcot Farmer's Feast booth is unique because it's going to have a rotating menu throughout the festival with the items changing about every month. And I've had that corn on the menu a couple festivals ago and it was delicious. But all this talk of food is really theoretical until a festival actually starts, which is why you need to make sure to subscribe to my channel so you know it's worth your time and money at Flower and Garden Festival 2024.